What better day than today, October 13th, 2024, to kick off my Civilization series, where we discuss what we can learn from the greatest pioneers, like Elon Musk, to create a new civilization that we urgently need in these days. Now, why today? You probably saw it. Mechazilla catching the SpaceX rocket that came back from space. And I want to use that example, that mind-boggling example of engineering prowess, and the comparison of SpaceX versus NASA, who normally should have done that, what we can learn for civilization building, what we can learn from the first principles behind SpaceX and their approach to engineering the future in order to build something much greater than even space. So before we do that, let's look at that amazing feat and look at what these guys have achieved today. So the Starship going to space, amazing to see. And we see the separation of the booster stage and the booster is now supposed to go back to Earth. But as you probably know already, they tried or attempted to achieve something amazing today. And that was to catch that booster. Yeah, so now you see the booster coming down to Earth. And there is Mechazilla. So the point is, can it land from orbit all the way into that amazing tower? And can the tower catch the rocket? just in time for rapid reusability. And now you see Mechazilla closing in on the rocket and catching that thing from space. This is unbelievable. This is completely mind boggling. Look at the engineers at SpaceX and the whole team. They can't believe that. If you're an engineer, you know that this was fundamentally impossible to achieve unbelievable this day and it will go down in history as the decisive inflection point for affordable orbital lift capabilities this is a game changer even compared to uh, self-landing rockets because by catching it you can shoot it right back into space with not much time in between because it's basically ready it can now go down on that mechazilla arm you know move the rocket down have it you know, revamped, put another Starship on top and go up again. This is exactly a day for the engineering history books. So unbelievable. Um, I just wanted to share this with you guys before we continue here. And why is this so important? And why is it so exciting for humanity what just happened? And what can we learn from it? So first of all, you have to understand the history of NASA versus SpaceX. You have to understand that SpaceX was founded by Elon Musk in 2002, I think. And all this guy had is $180 million he got from PayPal. He got a little lucky, not completely lucky, but a little lucky in the internet bubble selling PayPal to eBay, made $180 million. And with, one, with these $180 million, he was able to start two of the most iconic companies of our time, Tesla and SpaceX. Now, we don't know exactly how much he invested, or at least I don't know exactly how much he invested in SpaceX of that 100 million, probably 50 million or something, which is pretty bold to invest your entire capital into these two companies. But we have to understand, even if it's 100 million, which it wasn't, NASA's budget at that time was $50 billion a year, 50 billion, 500 times the amount, maybe a thousand times the amount that Elon put into SpaceX. Of course, Elon raised more money, but that's, you know, money he raised. NASA could raise money in theory. And what he achieved here is straight on the mission of NASA. This is not a small little achievement that Elon did here. It's a fundamentally aligned first principle key lever for the mission of NASA to go to space. Because the self-landing rockets and now Mechazilla is exactly the only purpose of NASA. Orbital lift capabilities for the United States to get everything up to orbit for defense reasons, for exploration reasons, for scientific reasons, for civilizational reasons. And why was Elon able to pull something amazing like this off, Elon and his team and his investors, uh, when NASA and the entire government failed doing that? That is the big question. And I'm using this example of space because space is so inspiring for all of us. It's probably the most inspiring thing to see rockets going up in space, coming down and unlocking this, you know, Star Trek age that we are now entering. 
it is so interesting because you would assume before Elon, this is completely impossible for any single man to pull that off and defeat all the governments, not just by a little bit, but dramatically. And when we look at the reasons why SpaceX was outperforming NASA to that crazy extent, we're talking a crazy extent. If someone has 1000 times less money than someone else and outperforms them 100x, that's a 100,000x advantage. It's non-trivial. We have to learn from that if we want to face the real engineering task of our time. And that is the purpose of this video, to kick off my civilization series. The real engineering purpose and the real engineering task all of us have is unfortunately much bigger than what even Elon does. The real engineering task is that you and me and whoever else wants to join have to build a new civilization. Because in case you didn't notice, our civilization, the West, Europe and the United States are in free fall. Even though there is some hope politically on the horizon, and a lot of people are very optimistic, especially right now with Elon pulling these things off, it's not going to be enough. If you look at the level of deterioration that we experience, our youth, our men, young men and women, the mental health epidemic, the health epidemic of diabetes, obesity, and so on, a vast, vast share, if not the majority of the population is effectively incapable at this point, not because of their own fault, to actually change the world in the way they should. Our government is deeply corrupted, as everyone understands. We have lost the will to even survive as many countries in the West. And to fix that will take more than just electing someone and putting some smart people into government. I think that is the most important insight that I gathered over the last, let's say, 10 years. It is not enough. You can't fix this politically. You have to fix it on a much deeper level, culturally and civilizationally. And what that exactly means, we will see in this series. And we will learn from the great engineering feats of Elon. And we will learn from these incredible multiples in engineering efficiency that Elon achieved and other achieved. So let's get to the point here. What is so important to learn? What we saw with SpaceX is that there are some rules that apply, you know, when you build something like this. The first rule is building something from scratch, like SpaceX, is much easier, even though it doesn't look like it, than fixing a sclerotic, corrupted system like NASA. And I'm not against the people at NASA, I'm just against the system. Why is this so important for our civilization building attempt? Because Building something like SpaceX seems like an insurmountable task, but it's possible if you do it from scratch, which is surprising. If you can do it with SpaceX, maybe you can also do it with civilization. The next thing is every great thing in history, especially new civilizations, was initially conceived and designed by just a handful of men. Look at the founding fathers of the United States. It was effectively four to five guys. Adams, Washington, Jefferson, Franklin. They had some friends, but it was effectively them. So when we have a grand task, like redesigning civilization, it's always a big mistake to start from the top of the current system and think, oh, you have to elect someone, fix the government, fix the FDA and the IRS and the SEC and the Department of Defense. No one can fix this stuff. We have to think from scratch. And think about like every great set of men did before, how can we get together with a small handful of men and really think this through and use first principles, which leads me to the third point. We need first principles, first principles to carve out what we can be sure of what needs to be done and create a crystal clear target destiny for us. If this is flawed thinking and tactical and reactive thinking around the system as it is, we are not getting anywhere. Both SpaceX and the United States in the beginning were designed around first principles that were true and clear, which leads us to the fourth point. The first principles allow us to have a crystal clear vision and focus on a target destination we want to get to that is actually true. 
and not assembled from some, you know, ragged little pieces. It is true in the most truest sense because it's devised from first principles. That allows us to achieve forced concentration, the focus and concentration long term on that goal that is worth achieving, that great vision that we engineer. Now, finally, I call it YOLO. You know, you live only once. That is a highly abused term for basically doing irresponsible stuff. I use it in the total opposite sense of the word. YOLO, you live only once, which means if we do something and commit our lives to something and our time and effort and energy, we should make sure this thing we are committing our mental state and resources and cognitive capabilities to is worth our effort. And the only thing worth our effort is the biggest thing we can conceive of. That is worth focusing on because it gives us the power and the time, the focus to stick to it. So these are the principles I want to use to think about what is this target destination we want to get to and how do we get there effectively. I call this target destination of this new civilization we built, inspired by people like Elon and achievements like Mechazilla and catching the booster or by AI and what Tesla does. I call that target destination, the target state. The envisioning of a future state of civilization that would be worth living in and that is effectively engineerable because it's built around clean first principles. And to get there is the purpose of this series. By the way, I'm always saying, I don't have all the answers, but I do have all the questions. And I need you guys to come together and together with me, engineer the answers so humanity can get actually a target state into their minds and we can attract the right pioneers, inspire people like Elon and many of the investors around him, many of the entrepreneurs around him to actually engage in constructing this target state. Now, this will include four important videos that will set the groundwork. The next one, I will tell you in the end, the three following ones will be number one, what are the first principles of civilization? I mean this in the most fundamental way, as you will see. What are the central pillars of the target state that can we can derive from these first principles of civilization? And then what is the master plan to build these pillars in the leanest, minimal, viable way? And we will discuss many very exciting things on the way. What are the pillars that on that the civilization will rest? How do we govern and defend that civilization? We will talk about mind viruses and how they destroyed huge parts of our current civilization and how do we you know, create something that can defend against these internal viruses in the future. And all of that will be a very exciting journey I'm inviting you to. And finally, the next video before we start this will be a video where I take the time to discuss why now is the time to do this, why we actually have no time to waste, why we are in a critical situation right now, and why there was never before a time more urgent, but also never before an opportunity as huge as now. Because we have now a critical mass of risk and pressure in on short notice, and a critical mass of pioneers, technology, and an evolving culture that allows us to achieve that. So I hope you stick with me. The next video will discuss that, why now is the time to build this new civilization. I'm super stoked about it. I'm so happy we live in these times where all these things become possible. I'm so grateful to Elon, his great companies, but also his great community and all of you guys to actually allow us to have these thoughts and make these attempts. And I hope you're with me. So see you next time.